Hello, I'm, I'm Jack Dangerman. This is my colleague, Bernie Zukowski. And we're going to be talking about GIS and uh, Gov 2.0. It's sort of my own sense that this technology provides a kind of framework for open government, mapping and geospatial sorts of things, and also for civic engagement. And I'll try to get that point across in a number of ways. Today, GIS is already very successful in government. It's being used at all levels of government, cities, counties, states, uh, national agencies for land use planning, for all sorts of things. And it's also even being used to help us see and understand the globe at a new context and things like this uh, global climate change model. GIS is also evolving. It's been evolving for 50 years now from just a mere research effort to a professional practice sort of activity to now on the open web. And when, that, when those steps and that evolution take place, the community who is actually using it just enormously grows. This step, this last step that's been in churn for a couple of years now, will leverage all of the investments that geospatial people, practitioners, scientists of various types have been making for generations in the past. The mechanism by which this information is going out on the web is a GIS server. It's a technology that allows maps and data as well as models to be served out and accessed by, by others through browsers or cell phones. This is kind of the model of maps on the web, except that it's much richer and much deeper. Agencies today are publishing their, their geographic information as geo-apps, and the information is traveling with it usually expressed through open APIs. These are rich applications that are, that are interesting, that are often mission and subject focused, and usually uh, are associated with high quality maps, but often models and analysis behind the, behind the scenes, kind of invisible, but yet they're running there. And that is leveraging not simply mapping for the masses, but all of that geospatial intelligence that's being built up and managed in agencies around the world. The act of making those services available on the web is causing a sort of second, a second sort of activity, which is a web-based geospatial framework with tens of thousands of these servers that express themselves in a kind of distributed network of data and services that are accessible. And the byproduct is that people can build apps on top of them that reach back to access that authoritative source information. One of the great breakthroughs that Tim and, and the whole Gov 2.0 world has brought about is the opening up and making available of data. But the serverizing of that data in the form of maps makes it easier and more accessible, as a matter of fact, enabling not only map expressions of information like recovery.gov, but also the ability to combine those various maps. And all kinds of new apps are, are being supported open government apps, citizen science apps, citizen reporting apps, things like crisis management that's happening now in the Gulf are multi-participant using the principles of geography and GIS in an integrative and collaborative way. And crowdsourcing is a major focus of this, not just broadcasting out, but getting information back into those very same agencies who are running these geo-services. My colleagues and I have been working on another step in this evolution, which is to try to organize these tens of thousands of servers and services that are standards-based into an environment in the cloud that allows the services sharing and the mashing up and the data sharing associated with that to be available in an open and interoperable way, un un uncluttered, unattached to any vendor or any organization. It expresses itself as maps and apps. In other words, an app store and a map store that can be accessed by any type of client through standards. Free APIs are the characteristic here, and people can take these, these um, unrestricted data sets and mash them up or apply them or embed them or use them in various ways. This requires base maps, ready-to-use base maps and imagery. And we've 
integrated a whole family of these, all the way from commercial ones like Microsoft's great Bing Maps to OpenStreetMap, uh, VGI uh, source stuff, and, and street maps, and image maps, and thematic maps, and also something new called a community-based map, which is a crowdsourcing effort to bring together topographic base maps from various authoritative sources. This is a method where we download, or an agency downloads a template, they pour their data into it, they create raster cache maps, and then serve it up in a tiled environment. My colleague Bernie's going to show that uh, maybe better live than, than maybe talking about it. Thanks, Jack. I'm going to begin with a little tour of some of these community base maps, and there's a variety of them. There's the world imagery base map, which contains content from uh, users across the globe. There's the world streets base map, which also contains contents contributed by users across the globe. But the one I'd like to focus on this morning or this afternoon is the world topographic base map. And that really represents a true community base map that includes content from the best available sources. And these sources include organizations like the USGS and the EPA, as well as contributions from many local governments, such as the city of New York, the city of Philadelphia, and also the city of San Francisco. Let's take a closer look at this. We'll zoom in a little bit, and you can see the rich detail which has been added and contributed by these users into this topographic base map that's open to everybody. Lots of other contributors as well, city of Portland, and of course the city of Washington, D.C., and many more. This is a growing and active community base map. Next, what I'd like to do is introduce ArcGIS.com. It's a brand new site. It's only been available for a few days, and it's uh, really being introduced here for the first time. One of the ways that we can experience ArcGIS.com is by viewing a gallery of base maps which have been contributed by users. Here's a base map about the Gulf oil spill. Here's a base map that includes USA weather warnings, and here's one about the floods in Tennessee. Now let's take a look at this one. This is a Washington, D.C. base map, and you can see the content that's been contributed by the city in this world topographic base map. Because these GIS servers are open, I can now search for additional data that I can add to the map. So here's published health facilities published by the city of Washington, D.C. I can add those to my map. Uh, here's also zoning. I can go ahead and add those to my map. And we're connecting live to these services, and behind these services is lots of information that I can gain additional context from just by clicking on these. When I've authored a map, I can go ahead and save that. And when I save my map, I'll give it a title. I'll do that very uh, quickly here. It won't take uh, time with this. But we'll go ahead and save that map. And this map has now been saved, and I can go back to this at any point in time and begin using it again. Now, this map is now part of my contents, and I can make some additional decisions about how this might be shared. Here's the DC map I just created. You see a thumbnail has been created automatically for me. And more important, it's remembered the services that I've connected to. And these are exposed uh, as REST endpoints, so you can go and discover these and build your own custom applications if you'd like. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share this map. And my choices are I can share it with everyone, or I can just share it within members of a particular group. And groups can be public, or they can be private. I'm going to share this, make it open to everyone. The content that you find is not restricted to local government content. It's global. Let me just provide a brief overview of some of the content you'll find for the United States. So again, I'll search ArcGIS online, and we'll find additional content I can add. Here's population density. I'll go ahead and add that to my map. And there's many, many, many layers which are available and open for you to use in any matter that you want. Another part of ArcGIS.com in the gallery are also showcased applications. And here's some of those applications. We have recovery.gov. We have the FEMA flood map viewer. We have a crime mapping application. And what I'd like to showcase this afternoon is this oil spill map. Now, this is a very interesting map because it combines elements of these open base maps as well as various open sources from the GIS community and elsewhere. Now, the red dot that you see in the center, that's the epicenter of the oil spill. And the blue polygons around that are from NOAA. They are the 24-hour oil spill forecast perimeters of the spill at the moment. And on top of this, I can add other things. Here's threatened sites from the Fish and Wildlife Service. I can also add some 
uh, volunteered information, user content from you Shahidi, uh, YouTube videos, tweets, uh, Twitter photos, and so forth. I see there seems to be a lot of activity here in the New Orleans area, and uh, here's a tweet from someone. You can take a look at that, and uh, here's some content from you Shahidi. So someone's experiencing sore throat and eye irritation, and here's another one uh, talking about a protest. So you can see how all of this is made possible and leveraged through these open maps and open sources, which you can use in a variety of different ways. Back to you, Jeff. Yeah, there's actually, <coughs> there's actually uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of these maps or applications that are living out there. So what we attempted to do is build a, a cloud-based environment where people could share their maps and their apps and other people could access them and freely integrate them like that. So what is this? It's a kind of new GIS. It's a GIS in the sky or a, uh, a cloud GIS, which brings together all of the services and data sets of this there's, there's literally, I would estimate, billions of these digital maps around the planet. And being able to organize those and discover them and mash them up in ways like Bernie showed, as well as bring in real-time feeds into environments and publish new maps and then make them available is what the goal was here. So thank you very much. I, well, check it out. <laughs> Thanks.